so yesterday we were discussing about uh, the description of the city the city had so many different different things that sabha the is like the heart and the main road is like the backbone shishumna nadi etc etc the main road and the intersections are like the throat where the different things meet together so like that where things are mentioned then as you come out of the city there are so many pleasant gardens are there they are all mentioned in the three verses 17 to 19 so the city is surrounded by the palace city palace is surrounded by beautiful trees creepers ponds and um, lakes aka uh, with a lot of lotus lotuses trees with branches moving in the spring wind the spring wind is connected to the sense of uh, smell because spring wind is filled with lot of uh, beautiful aroma and also the cooing sounds of the birds is connected to the sense of touch sense of uh, sound and then uh, the wind carrying the water droplets from the waterfalls is about sense of touch and uh, and then uh, uh, there are a lot of animals which are like sadhus they are inviting the king to come and enjoy taste and the beautiful plants greenery and gardens everything is connected to our um, uh sel farm beautiful farm so like that all these things are indicated um, the 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 five sense objects which are meant for enjoyment for the jiva so that's how indicated and then we saw in the next verse suddenly by the will of the providence there comes a woman yadruchaya agatam tatra dadarsha pramadottamam vrutteir dashadbir ayantim ekaika shatanayakai suddenly by the will of the providence there comes a beautiful pramada uttamam the most beautiful woman who came on her own yadruchaya agatam she is followed by 10 servants who are followed by hundreds of uh, further servants that was mentioned so we did said that we will discuss about this woman today so the king saw a beautiful man who arrived on her own that is intelligence buddhi or chitta functioning with ignorance avidya this means that the initial relationship of the jiva with the intelligence arises without cause adrichaya agatam so without any specific reason the jiva comes in touch with chitta ahankara buddhi mind gnanendriyas karmendriyas and pancha mahabhuta santan matras so that like that so today we'll see what are they etc so who is she and what are the other things etc we will continue pancha chirsha hi naguptam प्रतिहारेन सर्वता अन्वेषमानां ऋषभं अप्रौडां कामरूपिनीं सन वाज प्रोटेक्टेड ऑन ऑल साइड्स बाय अ फाइव फुटेड स्नेक शी वाज वेरी ब्यूटीफुल एंड यंग एंड शी अपीयर्ड वेरी एंक्शियस टू फाइंड अ सुटेबल हस्बैंड so now especially the woman is further described with whom she came etc etc she was protected on all sides guptam sarvata by a gatekeeper pratiharena in the form of a snake with five heads pancha shirsha ahina she was protected by a five headed snake and she was looking for a master anveshamanam rushabam she was looking for a suitable husband she was gentle aproudam and decorated attractively kamarupinim 
this is the description of the lady who came on her own suddenly in front of the puranjana the understanding is the intelligence buddhi and her chitta was protected by a doorkeeper with five heads which indicate the five functions of prana the snake is mukhya prana the breathing the snake is basically the breathing which contains five pranas prana apana udana vyana and samana the five hooks are indicative of five pranas which are taking care of all the bodily functions she was looking for a master the master is jiva the puranjana the enjoyer of the intelligence she is looking for a husband the husband is the jiva she was gentle and unmarried aproudam and unmarried just as she attracted a husband the intelligence with ignorance attracts the jiva just like here she is looking for a husband similarly the intelligence also looks for a living entity whom she want to serve the intelligence is fully covered with avidya or ignorance so with that ignorance she is looking for a master to serve completely she was always wearing various ornaments kama roopini this means that she was filled with various impressions or desires or plans the intelligence has so many plans to give enjoyment to the jiva so with that intention the intelligence comes to serve jiva that was the understanding so if you see yesterday also and today also everywhere wherever intelligence is there i have put buddhi and our chitta so this is my uh, little understanding prabhupada always says intelligence only but in the bhagavad gita and bhagavatam many places buddhi is used for both intelligence as well as for chitta also i'll give you one example from third canto in third canto chapter 6 or text number 1 and 2 it said that iti tasam swashakti nam sati nam asametyasa prasupta loka tantra nam nishamya gatimishwara kala samyam tada devim bibrushyaktim urukrama trayo vimshi tatvanam ganam yugapadavishad it is said that seeing the sleeping state in creating the universe because the elements were unmixed the lord mahavishnu first by his energy of cohesion appearing through time and then antaryami entered the 23 elements trayo vimshi tatvanam so after creating 24 elements which are scattered here and there in order to further the creation mahavishnu enters all the elements as cohesive energy bibri shakti and bring them together by that combination there appears unlimited brahmandas which are floating on the karma ocean they floats for 1000 celestial years then karma daksha vishnu expanding himself as garbha daksha vishnu as the antaryami of the each and every brahmanda enters into each and every brahmanda that's why it is said as antaryami so that are mentioned in the third and sixth chapter but here interesting it says that trayo vimshi tatvanam in the fifth chapter there was the creation of 24 elements in the sixth chapter there is mention of 23 only the 23 are maha tatva ahankara five tanmatras five grass elements and 11 senses what are the 11 senses five gnanendriyas five karmendriyas are mind then yeah, what is missing here what is missing here out of the 24 yeah ah uh, yena mahatatva ahankara five tanmatras five grass elements five karmendriyas five gnanendriyas and mind what is missing english ah uh, intelligence is missing but in the bhagavatam the mahatatva and buddhi are taken together many places in the bhagavatam because both are both function is same only both are function of giving knowledge giving awareness 
both Mahatatwa and intelligence are all of same function. Mahatatwa means Chitta. Chitta or Buddhi, both are of same. So these two are interchangeably used many times. Or they are used together also. That's how, if even if you tell one, you should see according to the context which one is being spoken. Both are considered together. So that's how we have to see. That's why I put Buddhi means uh, I mean, intelligence, what Prabhupada translates as intelligence is means buddhi and our chitta. Sometimes buddhi and chitta, sometimes buddhi or chitta. So, like that, we have to take into consideration according to the context. So, it is like that. So, Prabhuji, uh, chitta is consciousness only, right? And uh, when we say that it is subtle matter, so consciousness also is. A form of matter only? Yes, yes. It is also one of the 24 elements. It is also a form of matter only. Mm -hmm. See, we have four okay. modes. We have four modes. Mode of ignorance, mode of passion, mode of goodness, mm -hmm. and mode of pure goodness. Shuddha Sattva. Ah. So, Ahankara is corresponding to mode of ignorance. Okay. Intelligence corresponding to mode of passion. Mind okay. is corresponding to mode of goodness. goodness. And chitta is and corresponding to mode of pure goodness. Oh, okay. Mm. And okay. Uh, the function of intelligence is dravya spurana vijnanam. It will reveal the matter. Intelligence reveals the matter. Hmm. Chitta reveals spirit. Okay. Okay. Both function yeah. is revelation, revelation only, but one reveals matter, one reveals spirit. That's why in Bhagavad Gita, wherever the two terms come together, one the compound comes. Jnana yeah. Vijnana Chapyanne. Jnana yeah. Vijnana Samatvintam. Jnana means intelligence. Vijnana yeah. means Chitta, Com Chetana. Oh. So those two are taken together also many places in Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's Thank like you. that. Yeah. So here also in these chapters, though explicitly intelligence is mentioned, we should also see to it that it is indicative of both buddhi as well as chitta. So like that. Tribhuji. If you can little expand on chitta still further, because thoda gray area reh jata hai understanding. Means like chitta means consciousness, yes, but mind also is a part of consciousness. Now when we say that. Mind is not a part of consciousness. Mind has a different function. Intelligence has a different function. Chitta has a different function. Ahankara has a different function. We have discussed about all these things elaborately in the... 26th chapter of the third canto. So mind has sankalpa and vikalpa. Sankalpa means general desires. Vikalpa means special desires. Generally mind keeps proposing something. I do this, don't do this. Talk to him, don't talk to him. Go to the place, don't go to this place. These are general desires. Some special desires are, we don't know, but something comes suddenly. Out of the blue it comes out. We say that it is because of sixth sense, something like that. So that is the function of the mind. The function of the intelligence is whatever information collected through the five senses, five jnanandriyas, the ears, eyes, nose, tongue, and skin. Intelligence process and gives the results. What is what it tells. When the eyes see some object, the intelligence will tell that. Okay, this object is the chair which is in front of you, or the laptop, or mobile, or mouse, or the book, or the table. The information about the matter is analyzed and given by intelligence. And Ahankara is all about identity. So currently I'm in the human body, so I'm a human being. Currently I'm in the male body, I'm a male. Currently I'm a married person, so I'm husband. I'm currently I'm a father of two children, I'm father. So that identity is because of the Ahankara. I am an electrical engineer, I am a brahmachari, I am this, I am that. It is all because of Ahankara. Similarly, the Chetana is all about revelation of 
the knowledge about Atma, Paramatma, Kala and Prakriti. The knowledge about these four things will be given by Chetana. The knowledge about the 24 elements is given by the intelligence. So it's like that. But both the function is revelation only. So from the functional point of view, both are revealing you something. Both are giving you the information about something. About what it varies, but the function is same. That's why they can be taken together. So in that way. So Prabhuji, you said, uh, sorry, sorry, you can go ahead, Mahathir. No, 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 you go ahead. So oh, my side is over. Actually, I was just thinking, just now, Prabhuji, you said that uh, Chitta reveals four things. Uh, the spirit... Uh, Ishwara, Prakriti. Jiva, Prakriti, Kala. Yeah. So now Prakriti, how do you define Prakriti? Like when we say Prakriti, Prakriti also... Here, Prakriti is only in terms of three gunas, not the expansion of the three gunas, only up to the level of three gunas, that knowledge. Oh. Not the matter, because matter is revealed by intelligence. Ah, yes. The matter is okay. expansion of three gunas and that is revealed by intelligence. Okay, but actual gunas are revealed by the chitta consciousness. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Correction. So, I mean, further details also, I, I'll, I'll explain. Further, I also added some more... Uh, references from here and there, how to understand them based on their functionality and all, we'll see. In couple of verses later, we'll see all those things. So now the physical description of the Puranjani is given in the next verse. Puranjani. She will be called as Puranjani. Yeah, she, will be the, she will become the wife of Puranjana. So in that way. Sunasam Sudatim Balam Sukapolam Varananam Sama Vinyasya Karnabhyam Bipratim Kundalastriyam. The woman's nose, teeth, and forehead were all very beautiful. Her ears were equally very beautiful and were bedecked with dazzling earrings. She had a beautiful nose, su nasam, and beautiful teeth, su datim, danti, su dantim is supposed to be, but su dantim is there. So, forehead and face, su kapolam and vara ananam, and equally placed ears, sama vinyasya karna ubayam, decorated with earrings, kundala striyam. So her description is there. The appearance of Puranjani is given nicely. Her beautiful nose represents the knowledge of smell, a function of intelligence. So an example is given. Her beautiful some represent the knowledge of smell because the nostril we experience the information of smell. The intelligence experience the knowledge of smell. A function of intelligence. Her teeth represents the ability to taste flavors and to chew. Teeth is in relation to taste. Her forehead represents the clarity of the intelligence. In one sense, uh, forehead is also, the entire face is also about the face, rupa. We can take like that. Her face represents the superior part of intelligence. The beautiful face represents the IQ, intelligent quotient or something like that. Quick, quick weakness in analyzing the things, what they are. So, etc. Her ears were placed skillfully by the creator, sparkling with earrings for understanding the meaning of the scriptures concerning enjoyment and liberation. So, here two things are there. The ears were placed skillfully by the creator with equal dimension, equal size, 
they are not one is big one is small not like that they are equally of size looking beautiful and they are decorated with earrings that kind of which they are shining brightly for what purpose for understanding the meaning of the scriptures concerning the function of the ears is to hear what to hear hear about how to enjoy hear about how to go back to god so hearing about how to enjoy is all the function of the buddhi hearing about how to go back to god is function of the chitta so in that way puranjani represents both buddhi as well as chitta so the description of the beautiful face indicates it is connected to the five senses nose is about nostril the teeth is about the taste the eyes are about the form and the ears are about the ears are about hearing sound and the beautiful appearance is about the skin touch so in that way we can say of course the story gives the physical description meaning is all about functional aspects of the intelligence as well as chetana so in that way we have to see further description of her appearance is mentioned pisangani vim susroni shamam kanakam ekalam pad padbhyam kwanadbhyam chalantim nupirair devatam iva The waist and hips of the woman were very beautiful. She was dressed in a yellow sari with a golden belt. While she walked, her ankle belts rang. She appeared exactly like a denizen of the heavens. Hmm. <clears throat> Further, body, previous verse talks about face only. Now the rest of the body description is given. Dark in complexion, she is Shamam. She is like Krishna, dark in complexion. She was wearing yellow cloth. Pisanga nevim susroni. Like Krishna wears Pitambara, same thing. And a gold belt, Kanaka Mekalam. She moved using two feet. She is walking on two feet. Okay, jingling with ankle bells like a devata, devatam eva. She was walking with her two feet very slowly, very gracefully, which produces the tinkling sound of the ankle bells. This is the story description what it means the yellow cloth means the intelligence is covered by the actions in rajas the yellow cloth indicates mode of passion white indicates mode of goodness yellow indicates mode of passion and black indicates mode of ignorance simple and the color of the intelligence is blackish shamam okay as a cloud covers the sun a blackish cloud cover the sun intelligence covers the lord for the jiva just like in the summer or monsoon season the clouds will come and cover the sun for some time from our vision similarly the intelligence covers the lord from our vision from the vision of the jiva because intelligence only reveals about the matter 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 there is no revelation about spirit so it covers the spirit so when the intelligence is absorbed in the material enjoyment it only reveals the matter how to get the more how to get more matter for enjoyment not about spiritual revelation so in that way so this is a, this is the intelligence walking on two feet with the sounds of the ankle bells indicates that the intelligence is unsteady in hearing the scriptures in the previous verse it is mentioned that there are uh, two ears of equal dimension and they are glittering because of the kundala earrings which is, the ears are meant to hear scriptures which are meant for giving enjoyment as well as liberation but here is said that she is walking that walking is unsteady chalati chalatim that indicates 
she is unsteady in hearing scriptures which are meant for emancipation one thing because she is blackish in color she is covering the lord second thing is she is not steady in hearing about how to attain moksha she she is only interested in enjoyment so in that way nupra is in the plural to indicate not only the bells are on the feet but are also on the toes everywhere the bells are there they are producing so much sound to distract the person constantly walking and producing so much jingling sound is a function of distraction so not concentration on the spiritual instructions so this is the function this is the activity of the intelligence the <clears throat> further continues स्तनौ स्तनौ व्यंजित कैशो रौ समृत निरंतर वस्त्रेन निगूहती व्रीडया गज गा which were equally round and well placed side by side she again and again tried to cover them out of shyness while she walked exactly like a great elephant further the puranjani is described as the youthful breasts were equally round with no space between she hid them with the end of her cloth out of shyness and walked like a she elephant gajagamini her breast represent attachment and repulsion icha dvesha icha dvesha samuttena dvanda mohena bharata i studied in bhagavad gita there is one more verse in bhagavad gita also indriya sindriya arthyarte raga dvesho vivastitau tayorna vasham agachet tauhi asya paripantinau this is from third chapter 34th verse of bhagavad gita attachment and repulsion are firmly fixed in each of the sense objects raga dvesha are firmly fixed in each and every sense objects when we look at a sense object either icha will come or dvesha will come something will come some response will be there by the person so in that way one should not come under the control of attachment and repulsion they are the two obstacles on one spiritual progress both icha dvesha both are obstacles only either liking or hatred both are obstacle only a person may be old person may be old but attachment and hatred raga dvesha are always young so she is like youthful kaishorav the woman is the puranjan is youthful that is indicative of raga and dvesha are always youthful a person may become old also but attachment or depression are there youthful only they um, this is seen in the world attraction and repulsion equally bewilder the human equally rounded so both attraction and repulsion bewilder the person they bind the person equally in this material world liking and disliking both will attract us that's how lord krishna says na uh, what was the verse wow, 238 jaya jeo same krutva laba labau um so treating both victory and defeat equally fight don't become attracted to victory or defeat so that is the principle of nishkam karma yoga so in that way attraction and repulsion actually are not different they are same only they are the two different sides of the same coin for it is said kama esha go krodha esha rajo guna samudbhavah attraction transforms into anger unsatisfied kama becomes anger krodha that's all they are same only in one sense they are not different just as she tried to hide her breast with her cloth cultured people try to hide attraction and repulsion 
even cultured people also have attraction repulsion but they don't display openly they try to cover within themselves so that is the intent so these are the different way of description the last verse in which the description of the puranjani is coming here is the jiva by his free will becomes bound by the function of ignorance consisting of ichcha dvesha raga dvesha to show that the lord does not bind the jiva with ignorance by force how they they establish a relationship is explained in the next verse jiva's connection with the matter is not forced by the supreme lord it is by jiva's free will only that is indicated in the next verse am ahalalitam va talitam vira su savrida smita shobanam snigde na panga pankena sprishta premod premod bramad bruva puranjana the hero became attracted by the eyebrows and smiling face of the very beautiful girl and was immediately pierced by the arrows of her lusty desire when she smiled shyly she looked very beautiful to puranjana who although a hero could not refrain from addressing her mm. here comes the reason for jiva is getting bound in the material world pierced by the arrow shot or of her affectionate glance she was looking for a master puranjani was looking for a husband and she was looking at puranjana with attractive glances and with that glance he is attracted to her being pierced by the arrow shaft of her affectionate glance and the lusty movement of her eyebrows the brave king even though he is veera he is self controlled but still he began to spoke to that beautiful woman with a shy smile he is a brave but he is not dhira he is not self controlled he is a powerful person but he is not self controlled being attracted by her glan affectionate glances he began to speak to her so that he can establish a relationship with her eventually that's how the jiva comes into this material world and becomes bound in this material world life after life because the puranjani is so attractive so because of her affection she continually glanced at him the arrow her glance which is like the arrow of the cupid pierced him up to its star shaft the full arrow went inside because he was courageous he did not grow tired in the battle when the so many arrows he cannot continue to fight with the same vigor normally when arrow is pierced when a warrior is pierced by arrow he will fall down and die but this puranjana is so courageous he did not become tired in spite of being pierced by the arrow he became more energetic to continue to fight so like that he was energetic to obtain more and more enjoyment with the puranjani so it's like that the meaning is ignorance shows itself to be the object of enjoyment the intelligence covered by the ignorance it will show herself as a beautiful object for enjoyment the jiva accepting himself as the enjoyer thinking that there is some enjoyment in ignorance pursues the enjoyment thinking that and this puranjana is going to offer me lot of enjoyment the puranjana goes after her the lord knowing there is nothing to enjoy in ignorance remains aloof you remember in the bhagavad gita there was a upanishadic verse saying that uh, there was a tree pipal tree on top of that there are two birds one bird is trying to find out enjoyment moving from one branch to other branch eating the fruits sometimes the fruits are sweet sometimes the fruits are bitter but the other bird is not interested in enjoyment 
because it knows hey, there is no enjoyment in these fruits. He, he, the, the second bird is simply waiting for the first bird to look up, look at him. So that's it. Paramatma is there. Jivatma is there. Both are there in the body only. But Jivatma trying to enjoy more and more with the bodily limbs. But Paramatma is simply waiting. Understand that there is no enjoyment in this body. In this Kshetra. So that is the understanding. Because the intelligence, the Puranjani, surrounded by that city of nine gates and also so many pleasure places like the gardens, lakes, plants, waterfalls, the chirping birds, promises unlimited, uninterrupted, everlasting happiness to the Puranjana. And the Puranjana is getting attracted to Puranjani. His attraction is expressed in the upcoming verses. Okay. Huh? This is what is happening, Prabhu. Because we are so much attracted to that Puranjani and the city of Nine Gates. Katvam Kanjapalasakshi Kasya Shisha Kutasati Imam Upapurim Biru Kim Chikishati Sashmami. My dear Lotus Eye, kindly explain to me where you are coming from, who are, who you are, and whose daughter you are. You appear very chaste. What is the purpose of your coming here? What are you trying to do? Please explain all these things to me. So in the in every part, Sri so Prabhupada gives precautionary measures. How we should be freed uh, from the attractive uh, appearance of the intelligence, the sense gratificatory from uh, promises. So, in every purport, Prabhupada quotes some references, etc. etc. In the previous purport, Prabhupada quoted Kloshe Kralvar. So, whenever that thought of sense gratification comes in my mind, I will spit at the thought that comes. In the current verse, Prabhupada quotes Krishna Bahir Mukha Haya Bhogavancha Kare. Nikadastha Maya Tara Japatiya Dare. So when we turn ourselves away from Krishna, Maya will attract us. That's how the year Puranjana is attracting the Puranjana. So in like that. So therefore always look towards Krishna only. By becoming a servant of the senses, one becomes a great material hero. And by becoming the master of the senses, one becomes a Goswami or the spiritual hero. So like that. Prabhupada gives all the positive solutions in each and every purport. So, but we will focus on the current story so that we will not jump from here to there, here to there so much. So, we will go on one thought process. So, here he is speaking to the Puranjani. He is asking her, saying that, Oh, lotus eyed beauty, chaste, timid woman, who are you, Katwam? Whom do you belong to, Kasyasi? Who are your parents? What is your lineage? What is your gotra? What is your name, surname? Etc. So where from you? Where do you come from? What is your birthplace? Which country you belong to? Which kingdom you belong to? Tell me what you want to do around this city. Why are you wandering here next to this city? What is the purpose in which you coming here? So please uh, tell me about your whereabouts. He is gently inquiring from that lady. This is like common uh, thing. Anyone, when they see someone, unknown person, they will inquire who are you, from where you come. What are you doing here in the inquiry, etc, etc. Even though the jiva is always situated with the intelligence, in the sense, in every species, a jiva traveling from one species to other species, intelligence is there. He knew about intelligence. Subtle body is accompanying the soul, even after death also. But still he is inquiring the intelligence now. Why? Even though the jiva is always situated the intelligence and other factors, other 24 elements, for the jiva in the human body, the intelligence and other factors become outstanding. In the previously in different species, the intelligence was dull. But in the case of human being, the intelligence is bright. So it looks outstanding. That's why he's inquiring, who are you? Apitna brightly, dikre kya, So, he looks 
at intelligence as if he is looking at her for the first time. Because the intelligence in the human body is outstanding. It has the special features in comparison to the intelligence in other bodies. That will be explained in the next uh, couple of verses later. Because of attraction, he asks her questions as if not knowing her. Because he was so attracted to her, he was bewildered by her, her charming uh, appearances. He is asking her uh, about her whereabouts. From which place did you come? What do you want to do in this neighboring city? You have come to this city. What are you doing here in this city? Please tell me. Etc. Etc. He is inquiring from Puranjani. Then he further uh, continues. Ka ete ka ete anupata eta eka dasha mahabata eta valana subru koyam tehi. Correction. Purashara. Sanya Lotus eyes. Who are those 11 strong bodyguards with you? And who are those 10 specific servants? Who are those women following the 10 servants? And who is the snake that is preceding you? So, in the previous verse, he was asking about her. Now, he is asking about her servants, her followers. Who are your 11 followers? Eka Dasha Anupata. Who are these 11 gods who are following after you? The powerful Gobadi gods, Mahabata. Not ordinary Batas. They are powerful Batas. Who are these women attendants who are serving these 11 Batas? Who is the snake moving in front of you? Pura Shara. So, there are you see when it is said mind the Puranjani should be taken as Chitta. Intelligence is only supervised the activities of the senses. It is Chitta who supervises the activities of the mind. Because the ego is the master of the mind and Chitta is the master of the ego. So in that way, when the mind is said to be the servant of intelligence, it is actually referring to Chetana. So you should take like that. The snake which has become a plaything is prana. The snake is representative of the breathing, which has the five pranas. Five hoops are corresponding to five pranas. So like that, he is asking who are these? Who are you? And who are these 11 servants? Who are their servants? The unlimited women. And who is the snake with five heads? Please tell me. Then he further uh, continues. Pamhir Bhavani Asya Atavagramapatim Vichin Vati Kim Muni Vadra Hovane Padangri Kamapta Samasta Kamam Papadma Pokosha Patita Karagrat. My dear beautiful girl, you are exactly like the goddess of fortune or the wife of Lord Shiva or the goddess of learning, the wife of Lord Brahma. Although you must be one of them, I see that you are loitering in this forest. Indeed, you are as silent as the great sages. Is it that you are searching after your own husband? Whoever your husband may be, simply by understanding that you are so beautiful, you are so faithful to him, he will come to possess all opulences. I think you must be the goddess of fortune, but I do not see the lotus flower in your hand. Therefore, I am asking you where you have thrown that lotus. Yeah, this is the storyline. So it says that 
are you saying as personified from re because previously she see vrida so vrida she was having affectionate glance she was also like vrida kind of say looking at her now is asking that are you saying as personified or are you bhavani the wife of lord shiva or are you saraswati the wife of lord brahma or are you lakshmi the wife of lord vishnu alone in the forest like a great sage munivad are you looking for your husband whose desires are fulfilled by desiring your lotus feet he says that in a alone area lonely area it seems that uh, after telling after asking are you shyness person for are you bhavani are you saraswati are you lakshmi if not are these things you must be a sadhvi you must have come with your sadhu husband to the forest to perform austerities are you looking for your husband who has gone to a distant place to take bath or to perform severe austerities alone so like that he is asking by desiring by obtaining you has is as, as his wife he attained perfection like that is glorifying that sadhu where is the lotus bird that has fallen from your hand if at all you are goddess of fortune you must be holding the lotus bird lotus flower where did you drop it so please tell me what's happening so like that is asking her so many questions the understanding is one considers one's intelligence to be excellent and attractive to all people because of lack all of us as the individual independent personalities we consider that we are the most intelligent people when somebody says something you are telling me you think what do you think i don't know anything or what i know better than you you don't have to tell me get lost from here each of us may not be every time but many times we always consider that i know better than you you don't have to tell me you don't have to teach me what to do and what not to do how to do how not to do i know better than you especially when we go home and we try to tell parents no aisa nahi aisa karne ka aisa nahi aisa karne aap bol rahe mujhe you think uh, you know better than me you are born and brought up in front of me what audacity you have <laughs> so something like that so everyone all of us think that we have the best form of intelligence to do like a proper discrimination so it is like that this is indicated by the king's statements so the king is asked telling that are you shyness personified are you uh, goddess durga are you goddess saraswati are you goddess uh, lakshmi by giving that high regard so we are comparing our intelligence to the topmost personality in the universe say indicating that my intelligence is like the topmost personality in the entire universe there is uh, no, no other intelligence is compared to my intelligence it's trying to flatter one way see externally flattering but internally comparing her to be with mother lakshmi or mother saraswati or mother parvati it is like giving the highest regard so jeeva think that my intelligence is the topmost there is nothing can compare to it in this world so it is like that seeing her shyness because she covered her face and eyes with the veil he says she must be the personified form of shyness not just shy she is not feeling shy because of which she is covering her face not like that she must be the personified form of shy the shy devata if not shy devata she must be bhavani ar saraswati ar lakshmi it's so like that is comparing that is attracting me are you looking for a husband who follows dharma in the forest alone this indicates that he is attracted by the sweetness of intelligence 
So later on he said that, are you a sadhvi, the wife of a sadhu, looking for your husband who is performing austerities? Or are you a, uh, what you can say, are you an unmarried, unmarried girl? Are you looking for a suitable husband? Are you looking for a sadhu who is performing austerities to accept him as a husband? So like that. So basically he is telling that, are you looking for a husband who follows dharma in the forest alone? That means, are you looking for a saintly husband? I am here. You don't have to go here and there. So indirectly he is flattering her. So because he is attracted to her, he is uh, indicating to her that. So I am here. Why do you go here and there? So in that way. Noticing her beauty. She is so beautiful. Initially from far, her face is covered by the veil. So he is asking that, are you shyness personified? So when she came nearby, he saw her beautiful face. Then he is asking that, are you the wife of Lord Shiva? Are you looking for your husband Lord Shiva? Who is who must be traveling here and there? And then if you are not Bhavani, seeing her great intelligence, he asks, are you Saraswati? Are you looking for your husband Brahma? Looking at her beauty, he compared her with Bhavani. Looking at her intelligence, he compared her with uh, Saraswati. And then looking at her great wealth, she is completely decorated with a lot of ornaments. Then uh, he is telling that, are you Lakshmi looking for Lord Vishnu? So like that he is asking. You have controlled your senses like a sage. What kind of husband do you have? It seems that uh, you are not neither uh, Bhavani nor Saraswati nor Lakshmi. You must be the wife of a great sadhu because you are completely sense controlled. What kind of a sadhu you have as your husband? Can you let me know about your whereabouts? He has fulfilled. He has fulfilled all desires by desiring your lotus feet. By having you as his wife. He must have accumulated a lot of piety in the past. Only a pious person, the most pious person can you can have you as one's wife. Because you are the you are looking like a shameless person, fed. you are the most beautiful person like Bhavani, you are the most intelligent person like Saraswati, you are the most wealthy person like Lakshmi, and you are the most self-controlled, like a great sadhvi. Having you as one's own wife means that person might have performed so many pious activities. He is the most fortunate person in the entire universe. So like that, he is glorifying. It is commonly said that for all people, all types of wealth are dependent on, on the strength of one's intelligence. Whatever position one attains in this material world, is all based on one's intelligence. A businessman can do business and become successful businessman only based on one's intelligence. A student can become a great person in a great position only based on one's intelligence. Intelligence plays a key role in a person's growth in this material world. That's why the intelligence is compared in all different ways. It is compared to Shainas personified, compared to the beautiful Bhavani, compared to the intelligent Saraswati, compared to wealthy Lakshmi. Or some people might be endowed with Vairagya. So she is compared to Sadhvi. In any case, well, whatever one might be having, but it is the intelligence is the key factor. Whatever appliance one want to get, uh, what are the six appliances? Aishwarya says, Sagma Agrasya. Hmm? Hmm. Uh, any one of the six appliances one gets, that means one's intelligence is active, with which only one gets one of the six appliances. And now at the end he asked, if you are Lakshmi, you must be having the lotus on your hand. Where did you drop that? Why uh, you are not carrying it? That is indicative of 
the lotus bird is the dis discerning or discrimination power nishaya or pramana the lotus bird is indicative of discrimination of the intelligence the discriminative power of the intelligence or discriminating power of the jiva it is under her control though no one can see this she has thrown it away but she has thrown it away one of the functions of intelligence is discrimination or establish est estimating what is what right or wrong that is the function of the intelligence that discrimination power is indicated by the lotus held by the puranjani but it appears to be currently she dropped it that means you have dropped the intelligence discrimination power so bhagavatam third canto in this chapter are talks about the different functions of intelligence samshayota vi paryaso nishaya smrutire vacha swapa iti uchyate buddher lakshanam vritti tha prutak the characteristics of buddhi by its various functions are doubt samshaya expressing doubt when something is going on expressing doubt there is some god but hey there that is the function of intelligence then ascertaining false knowledge viparyasa expressing some uh concern hey things are not going properly what he says is not right hey kuch god but hey there that is ascertaining false knowledge and ascertaining correct knowledge nishaya firmly convincingly stating that yes this is it yes this is chair no doubt about it so something like that and remembrance smriti is also function of intelligence sleep is also function of the intelligence when intelligence is not too much agitated one gets good sleep when intelligence is too much agitated one does not get proper sleep one's whole sleep is uh, disturbed whole night is disturbed even patanjali yoga sutra also talks about the different functions of intelligence pramana viparya vi pramana viparyaya vikalpa nidra smrutya the functions of buddhi are correct knowledge pramana means correct knowledge we ask what is the praman hey praman kya hai aap ye bol rahe hain uska praman kya hai that is the function of the intelligence it it gives correct knowledge viparyasa it also tells what is false what is wrong also it establishes correctness it establishes the correctness also vikalpa means doubt nidra is sleep smrutya is memory these are all different functions of intelligence as per uh, sankhya yoga so like that by asking her asking her about her where abouts indirectly huh? if intelligence is not agitated we get good sleep if intelligence is agitated we don't get sleep for example if somebody criticizes you somebody speaks ill about you or there is some uh, conflict between two people do you get proper sleep in that night you keep thinking aisa kaise bol sakte mujhe ye kya kya soch rahe ho so like that that analysis is the function of the intelligence that's why we don't get sleep in the night if there is no analysis before going to bed you have proper sleep in the night Hare Krishna. Ah, yes, Maharaj. Prabhu ji, uh, Saraswati ji is wife of Brahma ji or daughter of Brahma ji. Saraswati is wife of Brahma ji. Because in like previous canto we saw that that Brahma ji got attracted to her daughter and then he casted of that body and so there. Yeah. He gave up the disposition. Then again later on he married Saraswati. So if Brahma why? is the creator. Brahma is the creator in the entire universe. Whom he will marry? In one sense, everyone are his children only. Then whom he will marry? Somebody should come out of the universe from outside of the universe. So he oh, has no. to marry someone 
among his creations only so he married vagdevi saraswati only okay so miss daughter in that sense that he created her that is why she is the daughter ah yeah. uh, because he created from our point of view she is considered to be her daughter is daughter but from brahma's point of view everyone is creation only so in that way we have to thank you consider any other devotees all others are following any questions hari krishna prabhu ji ah yes mata ji uh, I, i was just thinking uh, when you said that every uh, person thinks that his or her intelligence is the best you know superior yes. to every human so that thought is a product of false ego what is it i mean how no, one thing it is a function of intelligence only it is a function of intelligence only intelligence thinks that the, that intelligence is the best right like that no no the jiva thinks that uh, my intelligence is best because the intelligence is very attracted to look at her beauty yeah, is described in the previous verses yeah i understood that so when yeah. i when i'm saying that the jiva thinks that his or her intelligence is the best that thought is a product of i think false ego na because otherwise how somebody would think like this i don't know whether it is coming from ahankara or chetana or from where it is coming but that is the mentality we have all of us have that mentality all of us think like that only <laughs> that's the biggest uh, obstacle rather but whatever it is that is the reality whether it is obstacle or it is helping we don't know <laughs> but this is the reality we yeah, always because... think we are uh, we are we possess uh, that better uh, the top most the best form of intelligence and when it comes to self realization that means or uh, realizing the spirit uh, will be using the same uh, these uh, four uh, for realizing it right man buddhi ahankara yeah, and many times we are so much habituated with this kind of understanding that kind of thought process even hmm. among the devout circle also we always project ourselves i know better than you i know all these things i know best so that is that because of our conditioned nature yeah that is that is agreeing um, and uh, what i feel is that could be because of our false ego also but hmm. utilizing the same for uh, uh, what do you call it man buddhi ahankara and chetna only we realize the spirit right yes yes so yes. दोनों के फंक्शन में आई डोंट नो आई मीन वेल कंफ्यूज्ड अबाउट दिस सी इट्स लाइक व्हेन यू कंस्ट्रक्ट ए टेंपल वी हैव डिफरेंट पीपल आर देयर द यजमान इज देयर ही एज अ डिजाइनर आर्किटेक्ट ही एज अ मैनेजर द एग्जीक्यूटर एंड देयर आर पीपल हु एग्जीक्यूट Hmm. So different people do different things, unless until the architect designs, the manager can't hmm. do anything. Yeah. The designing should be there properly. Hmm. And the manager executes the different things with the help of the um, all the workers, the executors. Hmm. We can say. Hmm. So like that, we have all these subtle elements, grass elements, twenty four elements are there. Hmm. so we have to take their help only to do the needful whether in the matter of the life living uh, our livelihood or in the matter of our uh, sadhana in both the cases we have to use all of them mm mm-hmm. so we cannot deny them but still among them the intelligence is more oriented towards the matter the chetana mm-hmm. is oriented towards the spirit spirit okay all of us come together Uh, to assist us to do the needful so, hmm. in the way, in that way. So basically, and we are trying it, to yeah. Sorry, the anatomy same. of the human body. So I mean, don't see everything in terms of our sadhana. When you put our sadhana into too much, you don't understand what they are, how they are functioning. So hmm. keep the sadhana aspect little aside, so that you can understand how they are functioning in their uh, okay. normal existence. Yeah. Okay. And thank you. If you put everywhere bhakti, 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 you, you don't get them as they are. 
No, no, that that is uh, since creation we have yeah. kept bhakti aside only. We are trying to understand the technical terms here. But I was just yeah. thinking. Anyway, thank you so much. Yeah, Hare Krishna. So these are the different functions of uh, intelligence in relation to ascertaining what is the correct knowledge, what is wrong knowledge, what is uh, expressing doubt in the matter of sleep, in the matter of Yuji, you are not audible. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, now you are. Okay, okay. Maybe some internet issue. Fine. So, the king is asking whereabouts about the uh, Puranjani. So that indirectly we are understanding the different functions, different activities of the intelligence. Now, further continues. Nasam varvo, sorry, Nasam varoru anyatamabu vispruk purin imam vira varena sakam. Arhasi alankrita alankratumal adabra kama karmana lokam param shrir ivayagna pumsha. A greatly fortunate one, it appears, so greatly fortunate one, it appears that you are not of the woman I have mentioned because I see that your feet are touching the ground. But if you are some Mataji, your voice was not clear. Kindly adjust your desire, uh, device properly. Next time when you read, uh, we should be able to follow. Yeah. Yes. So here he is asking her, Oh, beautiful woman, Vara Uru. Vara Uru means Vara Uru. Oh, beautiful woman. You are not any of these women. You are neither shyness personified. You are nor Bhavani, nor Saraswati, nor uh, what we can say. Nar Lakshmi, because since your feet touch the ground, Bhuvispruk, the Devata's feet never touches the ground. So you are none of the Devatas. Only human beings feet are touching, touches the ground. So you must be one of the human lady. Huh? They travel in the ether only, bro. Why they need to touch on the ground? Abhikya. They will walk on the hawa only. You movie a movie. It's not 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 If not modern movies, but at least in the past, whatever movies from 1952 to 2000, those days, the movies are all made based on Rama and Mahabharata only. So in those movies, they display properly. You can see how you can see it. Movie. Me. clouds ke hai. Okay, see, that's how they travel. Ah, they they disappear here, they appear somewhere else. I say hota hai. Because it is mentioned in the drama and Mahabharata, that's why they are showing in the movie or drama. It is not a uh, imagination. Yeah, uh, Prabhuji, can I add? Ah, yes, Mataji. In, at one place, it is mentioned that uh, demigods, devatas, they feel uh, sad that when they come to Vrindavan. And uh, because they feel that this dust is so sacred, but since we are uh, we don't touch to the ground, we are not able to you know uh, touch the, this sacred mm -hmm. dust. That is mm -hmm. why they feel ba bad. Like. Yeah. So that's yes. uh, They are not able to touch. Because they are not able to touch, they feel sad. The human beings are fortunate that they are able to touch the dust. They are able to 
smear the dust all over, but they are not able to touch. They can't touch. They cannot walk on the ground. Huh? They cannot walk. They cannot sleep on the ground only. How, how can they touch? They cannot touch the earth. This is what we discussed now recently. When Prithu Maharaj was forgiving Indra, Vishnu was about to leave. Generally, Vishnu does not touch the ground. But that time, because he was so much mesmerized by the Prithu's uh, compassion, he forgave Indra and embraced Indra. So Vishnu's feet touching ground. Normally, they don't touch the ground. They are in perfect balance. Because Vishnu's feet was touching the ground, he became out of balance. He took the support of Garuda. For us, as long as we are standing on the earth, we are balanced. If you don't stand on the earth, we are out of balance. We need some support. But for Devatas all the way up to Vishnu, if they don't touch the ground, they are in balance. If they touch the ground, they go out of balance. So it is like that. Apko the movie dikana padega. That's all. Because earth is meant for human beings, humans touch here. Swarga is meant for Deva, they, they, they are there. They are subtle beings, they are not grass beings in that sense. So there should be a discrimination between the humans and uh, Devatas. There is a story in the initial days of Iskana, they said that there was a decoit. There is a group of uh, people who are the thieves. So the newborn child, he was trained very nicely. He was told, so now you have to pass the exam. Whatever training you have taken, you have to pass the exam. Go to the palace, go to Antapura, the ladies quarters, steal the queen's gar, 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 money her. He goes to the palace, he goes to the Antapura, the ladies chamber, he steals the money her of the queen. And when he was going out of the palace, he made some sound. It was noticed by the soldiers. They are following after him. So he was while well going, while well escaping from the soldiers, he happened to come to a place where some drama was going on. Not drama, some discourse was going on. So he, he sat in, in, in the middle, midst of the discourse. But the parents, the trainers told him that never ever hear from the sadhus. But now he came here, he forgot for a while that he should not hear from the sadhus. Then he heard some discussion. What was happening in the Sadhu Sangha? Sadhu was saying that the Devatas will never blink their eyes. The Devatas never stand on the ground. And the Devatas never cast shadow. Something like that he was feeling. After hearing these two, three statements, then he understood that I should not hear from Sadhus. Because Sadhu ka sunega to man badalega. Chor karna band karega. Chori karna band karega. Isle parents told not to hear. He closed his ears. Then, uh, but somehow he was caught by the soldiers. He was put into the prison. The soldiers are beating left and right, but he was not telling where he kept the hara. He, he hid somewhere. So then the king told that these people are the worshippers of Devi. They are constantly worship Durga. They will lie to anybody, but not to Devi. So send a, send a person as a Devi into the prison in the middle of the night. So he will speak the truth. So one lady was dressed like a Devi and they put all the special effects. Suddenly uh, the light gone and suddenly one lady appeared. The bells are ringing and so many things are happening that all the drama effect. And this fellow got up and he looked at the Devi and he offered obeisance and says, praise to the Devi, everything is there. Then Devi is asking, oh my dear child, why are you suffering in this prison? Please tell the truth. Where you kept the hara of the queen? So that they will relieve you. They will release you. While she is speaking all these things, this fellow observed some things. She is constantly blinking the eyes. But don't blink the eyes. And uh, because she is underneath a light, the shadow is there behind her. And her feet firmly touching the ground. Then he understood. Sadhu told that Devatas will never touch ground. They will never bring the eyes. They will never catch the shadow. So he said, my dear Devi, I will never say lie to you. I have not stole, I have not stolen the money hair of the queen. So I have not hid anywhere. So there is no this thing. So then she went and informed the king. Yes, he, has not, he is not the thief. Then he was released. <laughs> then he understood that. 
just by hearing three sentences from a sadhu i have been saved if i hear them from continuously from them continuously i will be saved from the material existence he became a devotee actually that is to inspire newcomers to become devotees the story is being told in, in the new programs but the details are उनका स्लीप ना अवर स्लीप जैसे नहीं बाबा अभी सब देर स्लीप इज नॉट लाइक अवर स्लीप देर देव देर नॉट ह्यूमन नहीं देर देवतास लाइक इफ दे स्लीप दे स्लीप फॉर सिक्स मंथ्स कैन यू स्लीप फॉर सिक्स मंथ्स कंपेयर मत करो सो इट इज लाइक दैट सो हियर इज टेलिंग दैट You are not none of these women. You are not the shyness person. But you are not Bhavani. You are not Saraswati. You are not Lakshmi because your feet are touching the ground. You must be one of the human, the resident of Bharat Varsha. You should decorate the city along with me, a great hero of many exploits, Amita Vikrama, Adarbha Karmana. Just as Lakshmi resides in Vaikuntha with Lord Vishnu. May you reside with me in this town. He is proposing her. Please marry me. Since you are not one of these devas, deva, devi, you are you don't have any husband. Since it seems that you are looking for a suitable husband, when I am there, why do you why why you have to go here and there? Please marry me and decorate the city and live in the city happily. You don't have to go anywhere else. It's like that. He is proposing her to marry him. so that's how the matter come to an end sorry puranjana is jeeva puranjana is intelligence means intelligence as well as chetana both yesterday you are not there na that's why the confusion no problem you just puranjana is atma jeeva atma Puranjani is the consciousness and the intelligence. She is associated with so other factors, all other twenty-two factors. It means he negates his previous questions to show that she is suitable for him. If she is a devata, he cannot marry them. She is a human being, so I am also human being. Both of us can marry. So compatibility is there. So. Oh, beautiful woman! Because your feet touches the earth, you are none of these devis. Devata do not touch the earth. Veera Varena refers to the king. Param is Vaikunta. I am the king. May you become the queen. I will give you the position of the queen. May you enjoy with me in this city of nine gates. By a little consideration, one can understand that one's intelligence is not the best. By telling that you are not one of the devis. the story line is that because your feet touches the ground you are not one of the devis same way we, we should understand that our intelligence is not the best intelligence there are so many people who have best intelligence so that common sense we should have that is indicated here but people think that they have the best intelligence but in spite of that we think that we have best intelligence because we don't have common sense so like that hari krishna prabhu ji here you mentioned just now that like puranjana is atma and puranjani is um, intelligence and consciousness so does it mean that the atma gets attracted these are the, the intelligence and consciousness are the part of the subtle body right so yes yes so uh, is it that atma gets attracted to the subtle body covering and then he enjoys to remain in that covering does it mean like yes that? yes yes that is true okay okay thank you atma gets attracted to subtle body especially the promises given by the subtle body that ah we can enjoy so much un unlimited uninterrupted eternal enjoyment so like that That means the spiritual enjoyment you are saying, na uninterrupted enjoyment, or no, 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 not spiritual. Ka spiritual. Oh, Abi yehi problem hai. Aap log bhakti ko hatao. Bhakti nahi. Idhar. 
There is okay, no okay. Bhakti concept. Okay, okay. Yeah, understood. No, no, Bhakti concept. Thoda jo, jo impressions hai, usko erase karke kuch samajhne mein thoda time lagta hai. All of you are on pure Bhakti level. We are on the material level. Please come to our level. So, he further continues. Edeshamapanga vikanditendriyam Saurida bava smita vibra madbruva Twayo pasrusto bagavan mano bava Prabada de tano gruhana shobane Continue, continue. Certainly, your glancing upon me today has very much agitated my mind. Your smile, which, which is full of shyness, but at the same time lusty, is agitating the most powerful cupid within me. Therefore, O oh, most beautiful, I ask you to be the merciful upon me. Mm. He's further requesting, having stated that, why don't you marry me and live in the city like Lakshmi resides with Vishnu in Vaikuntha? So he further says that, O oh, beautiful woman, since powerful Cupid, inspired by your bewildering bro and your shy affectionate smile, is harassing me. Just like in the previous canto, Titi approached Kashyapa in the evening. She said that the Cupid's arrow attacked me like a mad elephant, destroying me. Like the mad elephant destroys the sugar cane. Uh, crap. Same thing is telling that because you are charmed by your charming beauty, by your bewildering eyebrows, and your shy and affectionate glances, the cupid is piercing me with the arrow of attraction, is harassing me. Whose oh, senses are smashed by your glance? Please be merciful to me. He is actually submitting to her. I am completely enamored by your beautiful, attractive glances. Please be merciful upon me. Please marry me. In the previous verse, he just proposed, why don't you marry me and live in this town like the Lakshmi stays in Vaikuntha with Vishnu. Now he is telling that your appearance completely attracted me. Please save me by marrying me. He is submitting himself to her and uh, requesting her. This is how Jiva falls to matter. Previously, was telling that, oh, matter, stay with me. Now, it's telling that, oh, matter, please save me. That's how the jiva becomes subservient to the matter. Since Cupid, inspired by your glances, is attacking me, whose eye is shattered by your glance, be merciful. I am completely overpowered by the Cupid. Only you can save me. No one else can save me. His eye of knowledge is shattered. His discriminative power has been destroyed by the Cupid's arrow of attraction. His impressions of sense objects produced specially by intelligence attack him. Give me enjoyment of your sense objects such as sound and touch. His discrimination power is actually completely overpowered by the Cupid's arrow. Now he is requesting uh, Pranjani that, please bless me with the enjoyment of five Tanmatras. Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasa, Ganda. Only you can give me this enjoyment. No one else can protect me from my current degraded condition. My, from my current bewildered condition. Not degraded, bewildered condition. Only you can save me. Like that, he is requesting falling at the feet of Purunjani. Actually, you should pray. But actually, when Jiva comes in the in association with the Chetana and intelligence, the Jiva should pray that, please give me the correct knowledge, Vidya, your sister. 
ओ पुरंजनी जो यार पुरंजनी इफ यू ट्रीट हर एज इंटेलिजेंस देन यू शुड प्रे टू हर दैट ओ माय डियर पुरंजनी प्लीज गिव मी द एसोसिएशन ऑफ योर एल्डर सिस्टर हु इज चेतना फिल्ड विथ विद्या व्हिच रिवील्स आत्मा परमात्मा एंड भगवान एटसेट्रा एटसेट्रा सो इंटेलिजेंट पर्सन शुड प्रे when we come in connection with intelligence we should pray to intelligence that oh intelligence aapse bahut ho gaya please reveal your elder sister chetana so that she will help me to go back home to warden it's like that huh we can pray to yeah that's how we should pray to our intelligence oh intelligence aap bahut reveal kiya the santan matra usko matlab you have already given so much sense objects enough is enough please call your elder sister let's see help me to go back home back to garden so like that that prayer we should make please please to pursue pursue etna when she comes she will pursue jab tak wo dur rahega to pata nahi chalega na jab wo aayega wo pata chalega see how to pursue chetna how do we pursue intelligence simple no no not discrimination when there is a sense object if you are becoming attracted to sense object means your intelligence in action it is intelligence will tell that this sense object will give you enjoyment when you see a powerful menu when you go to govindas when you see the menu card how do you choose some particular item either way also whether based on previous experience also due to lack of previous experience also hey this name looks very attractive let me try this today out of curiosity also it can be that is by the intelligence intelligence will inspire you or it will promise you some enjoyment is there in this in the object that is the function of the intelligence the function of chetana is when we hear some spiritual discourse the chetana will me convince you that my dear sir please follow the instructions given by the spiritual authority he is telling you follow four regulatory principles no meat eating no intoxication no gambling and no what is the next one no illicit sex and chant hari krishna maha mantra one round or two rounds as per your convenience that is the function of chetana chetana will give us is tries to inspire us do some spiritual activities doing some mental activities inspired by intelligence doing some spiritual activities inspired by the chetana so like that so if you are undertaking some spiritual activities means our chetana is active if you are not undertaking if you are not undertaking any spiritual activities only mental activities are undertaking means our intelligence is active chetana is sleeping so at that time we have to pray to intelligence requesting that please wake up your sister also let me start those activities also something like that hari krishna that's how one should pray where does determination come in intelligence or mind it is determination is there in both the cases both the cases intelligence also has determination that's why i'm saying functionally both are doing same okay but the, the dealing with uh, what is different both okay. intelligence also have the same function chetana mm. also the same function chetana also has discrimination intelligence also has discrimination mm. intelligence discrimination within the purview of the matter chetana i'm not saying discrimination i'm talking about determination yeah determination also that only na so intelligence will determine will give you the determination to do the mental activity pakka okay and chetana will give you the determination to do spiritual activity pakka okay okay it is there the both the places but where you show the determination that uh, gives you which function is under under action in the in relation to matter intelligence is in action in relation to spirit chetana is active so it's like that both have determination spirit and intelligence ah here prabhu ji says spiritual intelligence is chetana material intelligence is buddhi So like that also you can take no issue. 
so now the two things are there the intelligence function is avidya chetana's function is vidya avidya focuses on dharmartha kama that what we call as sakama karma performing activities here in this material world religiously especially we are discussing from scripture so religiously trying to enjoy that is sakama karma and uh, chetana mainly focuses on vidya uh, i mean if chetana is always works with vidya focuses on moksha and moksha is attained by nishkama karma yoga gnana yoga ashtanga yoga mixed bhakti and pure bhakti of course pure bhakti is for prema but moksha is all about uh, by these four nishkama karma yoga followed by gnana followed by yoga or by mixed bhakti moksha can be attained that is the function of vidya so it's like that so our intelligence is limited with avidya it only focuses on dharmartha kama which we call it as sakama karma but our chetana focuses on chetana in association with vidya focuses on moksha which executes activities in relation to nishkama karma yoga gnana yoga ashtanga yoga and mixed bhakti yoga so it's like that yeah project has also been are you getting the distinction between the intelligence and the chetana devotees yes. are confused kya yes. chal rahe kya bol rahe aap ye bol rahe wo bol rahe ye chetana intelligence spiritual ni mental intelligence sab upar se ja rahe Hmm. Yeah, so, mind is focusing on something. Nah. One one thing is there, like you explained very nicely, both the things this avidya and vidya, which is the function of intelligence and of the chitta. Uh, but the, where does the pure bhakti will lie in this category? If we pure start? bhakti is beyond three modes. Pure bhakti is that is nirguna bhakti. So that, that is yeah yeah you can please continue. pure bhakti is with chetana only in the pure state of chetana chetana is also contaminated current that's why we say every day morning cheto darpana darpana marjanam the mirror of heart should be purified by chanting process so the cheta is can be taken as heart which is the living place of manbuddhi ahankara chetana or cheta can be taken chetana can be taken as the cheto can be taken directly taken as chetana itself the whole purpose of sadhana is to purify our chetana which is contaminated currently which is supposed to be in chuta sutta platform everybody we are not able to hear you i am saying even in our contaminated state of chetana also we can practice nishkama karma yoga gnana yoga ashtanga yoga and mixed bhakti but only in pure state of chetana we can practice ananya bhakti or pure bhakti not mixed bhakti so it is like so pure state of chetana means there is no covering of intelligence and intelligence is not dominating at all means in the material yeah like that also you can take pure chetana means intelligence is also there mind is also there but they are not attracted to matter there is no attraction to matter there is only attraction to spirit yeah understood attraction to matter is contamination no attraction to matter is purification So chitta has to be that, that's what you what you said just now chitta darpan majan so chitta has also has to be purified completely then only it can move towards the direction of pure bhakti right mm, yes yes either we can say purification or you can say awakening of chitta chitta is currently dormant we have to awaken it so that it will start its activities that's what it says na we yeah. should actually pray to intelligence saying that please give me knowledge vidya or your sister your sister is sleeping please wake her up so that i will start bhakti bhakti means i will start either nishkama karma yoga gnana yoga ashtanga yoga or mixed bhakti so it's like that thank you guru 
ਕਿ ਇੰਟਰਨੈਟ ਕੁਝ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਅੱਜ ਹਰੇ ਕ੍ਰਿਸ਼ਨਾ ਯੈਸ ਪ੍ਰਭੂ ਜੀ ਓਕੇ ਵਦ ਤਵਦਾਨਨਮ ਸੁਬਰੂਸੁਤਾਰਲੋਚਨਮ ਵਿਆਲੰਬਿਨੀ ਲਾਲਲਕਵਰੰਦ ਸੰਮ੍ਰਿਤਮ ਉਨੀਯ ਮੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਯ ਵਲਗੁਵਾਚਕਮ ਯਦ੍ਰੀੜਯਾ ਨਾਭਿਮੁਕਮ ਸੁਚੀਸਮਤੇ ਮਾਈ ਡੀਅਰ ਗਰਲ ਯੂਅਰ ਫੇਸ ਇਜ਼ ਸੋ ਬਿਊਟੀਫੁਲ ਵਿਥ ਯੂਅਰ ਨਾਈਸ ਆਈਬ੍ਰੋਸ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਐਂਡ ਵਿਥ ਯੂਅਰ ਬਲੂਇਸ਼ ਹੇਅਰ ਸਕੈਟਰ ਬਾਬ ਇਨ ਐਡੀਸ਼ਨ ਵੈਰੀ ਸਵੀਟ ਸਾਊਂਡ ਆਰ ਕਮਿੰਗ ਫ੍ਰਮ ਯੂਅਰ ਮਾਊਥ none none the less you are the co- you are so covered with shyness that you do not see me you do not see me face to face i therefore request you to request you my dear girl to smile and kindly raise your head to see me yeah he is further uh, imploring to puranjani He's saying that oh women with bright smile raise up your face don't continue with the lowered face out of shape please raise up show me your face with fine eyebrows and eyes with beautiful pupils surrounded by long locks of black hair and endowed with attractive words which you do not show out of shyness so till now she was like a unknown person a foreign person but right now we already expressed that i want to marry you please marry me and then he says that since i am ready to marry you please show your face completely you don't have to cover now and also speak few words itna silent mat rakho mat raho thoda baat karo taki let me be happy by hearing your words so like that he is requesting her to speak the lusty jeeva with no memory of the past shows his bewilderment valgu vachakam means who speaks attract to words show that face which you do not point towards me till now she was covering her face with a veil now is requesting the intelligence that buddhi that, that, that uh, puranjani that please uncover your face and speak few attract to words being bewildered by her charming glances he is requesting her like this actually the intent is the understanding is oh avidya oh ignorance you have cheated me of spiritual bliss but now at least provide me a wealth of sense objects so that i can enjoy in the previous verse that when we come in touch with intelligence we should pray that oh intelligence please wake up your sister your twin sister who is sleeping so she says no 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 sister i am the same person then he says that you have cheated me with the sense of uh, you have cheated me with that spiritual bliss you are telling that your sister is yourself only you are not revealing about your sister by the way by that you are cheating me of spiritual bliss but at least give me material bliss i is telling that you have cheated me of spiritual bliss but now provide a wealth of sense objects so that i can enjoy give up your stubbornness give up your stubbornness the faith with beautiful features indicates form taste smell touch and sound he prays to enjoy them so he is telling that even though i sincerely request you wake up your sister and you are telling that there is no other sister it's me only by telling that you have cheated me a spiritual bliss at least give me material bliss by providing me the five sense objects of shabda sparsha rupa rasa ganda at least show that face of yours removing the veil like that is requesting her matlab you see he is so much bewildered that even though you are not revealing me about the adhyatma that uh, that uh, i should we were discussing na uh, atma tattvam 
Apasitam Atma Tattvam Gureshu Guru Medinam. Even though you are not willing to reveal Atma Tattva, at least reveal the fire by uncovering the veil which is covering your beautiful face. It's so like that he is requesting her. This much is bewildered. Her beauty is so attractive, he is completely bewildered. Even though you know that there is something called spiritual knowledge, he is not caring about it. Give me, give me the material knowledge which fulfills my desire. So like that, he surrendered to it. So like that. He stopped. He requested that, please uncover the veil and reveal your face and speak few words. For which she will respond now. She will speak in, in reply. Ittam puranja namnari yachamanam adhiruvat. Text number 32. Abhyanandata tamviram asanti viramohita. Someone read the translation. Narada continued, My dear king, when Puranjana became so attracted and impatient to touch the girl and enjoy her, the girl also became attracted by his words and accepted his request by smiling. By this time, she was certainly attracted by the king. Narada says, O oh king, O oh Veera, Narada speaking to Prachanabari, O oh king, the smiling woman attracted to the foolish Puranjana who was imploring her in this way spoke to him. Initially, Puranjana proposed, please marry me. Sir, you can marry me and you can leave me living along with me in this uh, city of nine gates like Lakshmi lives with uh, Vishnu in Vaikuntha. Later on, he said that, please marry me. I am disturbed by the stupid. And eventually, he says that, please, anyway, you treated me happiness, at least give me material happiness by uncovering your face, by showing your beautiful face and also by uttering few words. And for which uh, Nardami said that he is a foolish Puranjana. Abhiravat Puranjana Mohita. Because he is bewildered, he had become Adhiravat. He is no more Dhira. He is no more self-controlled. He has become subservient to Puranjani. That's why he is called as Adhiravat. And unto that Adhira, Puranjan is speaking to. She is responding now. Puranjana was fool, foolish or seemingly foolish. Adhiravat. As if Adhira. Actually he was intelligent. Having knowledge by his very nature. So Acharya is saying that. From his talk. It appears that. He has become Adhira. Uncontrolled. But he is actually knowledgeable. He is simply flattering her. To attract her. So that because he is intelligent, we know how to in that way. Oh valiant king, I have told you a story about yourself only. By telling Veera, by calling Prachinabari as Veera, by talking about another Veera who is Puranjana, indirectly the story indicated that, oh king, I am talking about yourself only. You are that Veera. You are that Puranjana. Just as the jiva is supper, is jiva is attracted to sweetness of the sense objects by the intelligence, the intelligence can be attracted to the spiritual sweetness by the jiva. <coughs> it's like counter. Because the Puranjani is so attractive, the jiva gets attracted to her. Similarly, if the jiva remains dhira, the intelligence gets attracted to spiritual beauty. Even though intelligence possesses so much material beauty along with her, the town is so beautiful, it can offer so much uh, sense gratification. But if the jiva remains dhira, the intelligence will start serving that uh, determined that dhira, the determined jiva, so that he can attain entry back home back to God. It's like that. It is either way. If the jiva remains dhira, intelligence serves the dhira. If the jiva becomes adhira, he will become subservient to intelligence. So both can happen. No, here you take intelligence only. Yeah, chetana becomes active and intelligence becomes subservient. If we become adhira, intelligence takes super position and the person becomes subservient to intelligence. So like that.
so now she will reply she will respond to the king she says that na vidama vayam samyak kartaram purusharshabha atmanascha parasyaapi gotram nama cha yatkritam the girl said o oh best of human beings i do not know who has begotten me i cannot speak to you perfectly about his this nor do i know the names or the origin of the associates with me she is responding that o oh best of men o oh purushar shabha i do not know who produced me i don't i do not know about my parents and i do not know my name or family i am a lonely woman wandering in a in wilderness not the names and family of those who are accompanying me i don't know about my parents my name my kingdom my family also i don't know about the parents name family and kingdom of the 11 servants of me and also the snake we don't have any information about ourselves i don't the understanding is i do not know the answers to your questions in the context of the story the king understood that she must be the daughter of some apsara who came to bewilder a sage bhagavatam 9th canto gives all such stories only whenever some great sage performing some tapasya one apsara comes to disturb that sage like uh, vishwamitra va tapas performing tapasya ramba comes ramba in menaka menaka first menaka comes eventually becomes attracted to her they beget a daughter satyavati shakuntala shakuntala is there and none of the people took care of her they left they left the baby there and they left purva menaka went this side vishwamitra went this side she was uh, raised by kannamushi kannarushi so like that so since when she said that i don't know about my parents i don't know about my family and my gotra all these things then he thought that so you must have been a daughter of a sage and uh, apsara by the intervention of indra apsara came to disturb the sage and you are born so like that he thought according to the story line but according to the actual understanding is in, the, in terms of the intelligence the spiritual meaning is the ignorance which covers the knowledge of the jiva should not claim to the know, know the lord here the intelligence is playing the role of avidya not playing the role of vidya the avidya function is to bind us avidya should not say that jeevara swarupai krishna antidas you should not say like that and avidya should not say that i am intelligence i am a by product of three modes of material nature which are coming from pradana which is coming from mahavishnu though she knows she should not reveal it to jeeva if she reveal everything how would jeeva will enjoy in the material world in ignorance that's why she said that i don't know my whereabouts i don't know about my creation i don't know about my parents she is supposed to say like that if everything is revealed there is no fun so this is the function of avidya the spiritual meaning is the ignorance which covers or the puranjani with avidya which cover the true knowledge of the jiva the function of the avidya is to cover the five avrutas avidya smita raga dvesha binivesha should not claim to know the lord that's why she said that i do not know into which lineage i was born nor my name i don't know about my parents my lineage my uh, name and uh, family background etc etc the jiva can be kept in ignorance if everything is given jiva will again back to square only मैं तो विष्णु का अंश हूँ मैं इधर क्या करूँ मेरे को वापस जाने का इधर कुछ करना है तो पूरा कवर होना चाहिए दैट्स वाई शी डज नॉट रिवील इट्स ट्रू आइडेंटिटी सो इट्स लाइक दैट नेक्स्ट हरे कृष्णा यस मत प्रभु जी व्हाट इज अप्सराज इंटरेस्ट टू ब्रेक द तपस्या ऑफ एनी मुनी लाइक व्हाई दे इट इज नॉट अप्सराज इंटरेस्ट इट इज इंद्रास इंटरेस्ट whenever some muni performs tapasya indra thinks that he wants my position that is from insecurity point of view from other point of view indra is a via medium to test whether somebody is really performing real tapasya or only imitating tapasya 
Lord test through Indra. Okay. There is a test to the sage. Whoever is performing tapasya. In our regular Bhagavatam classes, we say that Indra is so insecure. He, uh, he, he sends a apsara to disturb them. That is from Bhagavatam Katakar point of view. But the reality is, Indra, as a bona fide representative of Lord Vishnu, tests the sincerity of the tapasvi. How sincere is he in performing the tapasya? By alluring. Why do the abandon the chair? Huh? Why do they abandon the child? Abhi, inko ka, apsara. The, the devatas never care for children. Why <laughs> say yeah. in Devaloka, the ladies does not go through nine months pregnancy period. The ladies don't have to take care of the children. After the male and female come together, within a murta, the baby is delivered. Within another murta, the baby will become 16 years old, youthful, teenage Kaishora. There is no care in taking care of the children in the heavenly abodes. But here in the Buloka, the child is born as a human child. So somebody has to take care. They don't want to go through all this trouble. They make either jaw is a trouble love. They'll go, they'll go back leaving the child there. Some other person will take the responsibility of taking care of that child. It is like that, Prabhu. Achha, na, so, so much time is uh, uh, saved. Uh, so much mm -hmm. time of the life is saved. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Huh. One may think like that. But by taking care of the children properly, the human beings may sexual advancement. By not having that opportunity of raising children, the heavenly denizens are bereft of that spiritual advancement. Bereft of the opportunity of spiritual advancement. Taking, oh. children, taking care of children is not a waste of time. It is actually a process of spiritual progress if the children are raised properly. How it is a like spiritual advancement? Can you help with that, Prabhu? Because it is the activity in the Bhartha Varsha. Whatever we do in Bhartha Varsha is a spiritual activity only. Yet Karoshi, Yadash Nashi, Yadjoshi, Tadashi, Yadapashi, Kaunteya, Tadurushwa, Madar Panam. Even drinking water itself is a spiritual activity, Bhakti. Then why not it is uh, ray, taking care of children in the Bhakti activity? But we should do as Madar Panam, as an act, offering to Supreme Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. See, every activity that we do is a bhakti activity. If we do it as a service to Supreme Lord. If it when we don't do it as a service to Supreme Lord, it becomes a mental activity. That's all. Bhakti does not put any restrictions. Bhakti helps us how to include everything in bhakti. Bhakti is not an elimination, it is an inclusion, inclusive process. Okay. Actually, I wanted to complete verse number 35 because that uh, that has uh, whatever we are discussing, it will give you complete reference. Just give me five minutes. We'll complete the next verse and we'll close for today. Ihadya santam atmanam vidamana tataparam yeneyam nirmita vira puri sharanam atmana. Read the translation. The girl said, Oh, best of human beings. Um, I didn't one minute. 34 now, Prabhuji. Yeah, 34. Oh, great hero. Oh, great hero. We only know that we are existing in this place. We do not know what will come after. Indeed, we are so foolish that we do not care to understand who has created this beautiful place for our residence. Yeah. Oh, King, I know that I am existing here today and nothing else. I don't know about my past. I don't know about my future. What I know is only today. Today I'm existing here in the city. I do not know by whom my shelter, this city was built. I even don't know who constructed this city. This is the function of Avidya. Avidya does not want us to have the knowledge of our past, our future also. When we are in the womb, we remember 100 births, whatever we are doing. As soon as we come out of the womb, we forget everything. We cry, who am I, who am I? So it's like that. 
what do you know king is asking she says i do not know by whom my shelter the city was built the king understood when she said that she don't know but the king understood that the city was built by some sage like kardama by his power of yoga for material enjoyment kardama has conducted aerial mansion previously some other sage like that must have built the city okay no problem unka kaam ho gaya to chhod ke chale gaye so like that so now ete sakyas ete sakya sakyo me nara naryasch manada suptayam mai jagarti nago ayam palayan purim my dear gentlemen all these men and women with me are the no at my friends and this snake who always remains away protects this city even during my sleeping hours so much i know so much i know i do not know anything beyond this um, oh respectful one the men and women are my friends the eleven men the five gnanendriyas five karmendriyas and mind are my male friends and hundreds of the female who are their servants while i sleep while i sleep the snake stays awake and protect the city when i go to rest all these my 11 male friends and the hundreds of female friends also go to rest but the snake remains awake the snake never goes to sleep we are awake throughout the day we go to rest throughout the night but the snake is awake both the day and night the understanding is she answers his question about her followers who are they he asked the 11 male friends are the 11 senses and the unlimited female attendants are the actions of the senses the 11 male friends are the 11 senses five gnanendriya five karmas in the mind the female friends are the respect to actions of the respect to senses when i sleep along with my associate 11 associates the snake prana remains awake even when we go to sleep also breathing is going on when we are awake also breathing is going on when we are awake the mind senses are active when we sleep the mind senses are inactive but the breathing is going on when dreaming in the sleep when we are dreaming the senses do not function and in deep sleep even the mind and intelligence do not function when i go to sleep in the dream the intelligence and mind are still active the senses are not active the gnanendriya kamis are not active but the intelligence is still active intelligence and mind is still active but when i am in deep sleep even the mind does not function the mind and intelligence does not function but the prana remains active even in our deep sleep also prana does not stop breathing does not stop if breathing stops we will give up this body we are dead so now i have two verses from bhagavad gita third chapter 42 43 so what is explained in this shloka and in this explanation per part we'll refer through this verse and then we'll close for today indriyani paranya hor indriyebhya param manaha manasastu para buddhir yo buddhe parasattu sa evam buddhe param budva samstabhyatmanam atmana जयुशत्रुमहाटर that uh, the five pranas which are there within our body in the third canto we discussed the gnanendriyas are supervised by intelligence the karmendriyas are supervised by prana the five gnanendriyas are always always with the intelligence the five karmendriyas are always with the five pranas they cannot exist separately so when bhagavad gita is talking that indriyani paranyahur the 10 senses are superior to the gross body made up of the five gross elements that means the ten senses along with their supervisors along with the intelligence and along with the prana five karmendriyas with intelligence five karmendriyas with prana this ten this 10 plus 2 are superior to 
the gross body made up of the five gross elements. The senses are active throughout the day. During the Jagruti state, the twelve, sense, the ten senses, along with intelligence and prana, are completely active. Of course, mind, ahankara, and chetana are also active, but we are gradually going from bottom to top. When we go to sleep, the first state of sleep is swapna. Even the sleep, we are dreaming. The mind, along with ego, is superior to the senses as it is even stronger, not being destroyed during the dreams when the senses fall asleep. Indri ebya paramanaha. Superior to senses is the mind. The understanding is during the daytime, with the help of our 10 senses, we are interacting with the outside world. We see, we hear, we speak, we smell, we touch, we lift, all these things we do. Our senses are active in the during the wakeful state. In the night time, when we go to sleep, when there is a dream, our grass body is inactive. It is lying as if dead. Our Analysis has nothing to acquire information. Intelligence has nothing to do. The five genes are sleeping and intelligence is sleeping. When the karmendis are nothing to do, the mouth is not speaking in the night time. Some people speak in the night time also, but generally not all. The hand, legs are not walking. But we may get some dream. What? We may fly from this mountain to that mountain. In the dream, what is happening? We have got a new grass body. We have got new 10 senses. We have got new intelligence. We have got new pranas, pacha pranas. But the mind is same only. Mind is here only. We are only dreaming. Our mind is only dreaming. Our ego is uh, still dreaming. Now our mind and ego are trying to enjoy with the new grass body of a bird, with the new senses which can fly. Our karmendriyas cannot fly, but the bird's karmendriyas can fly. It is flying from here to there, making so many plants. Now, No, can't hear. Not audible, Prabhuji.
ஹரே கிருஷ்ணா ஹரே கிருஷ்ணா டிவோட்டிஸ் வில் ஸ்டாப் இயர் இட்ஸ் நாட் கமிங் நோ ஒரு <laughs> next week hare krishna hare krishna grandara shrimad bhagavati ki jai sula prabhupad ki jai yes hare krishna